Africa is my identity. Nigeria is my country. But the Igbo tribe is where I am deeply rooted. Igbo Kwenu. Igbo Kwenu. Igbo Kwesonwo. Hey. The Igbo tribe in the Igbo is an ethnic group native to the present day south central and southern eastern part of Nigeria. To mark this year's celebration of Africa Day, I will be celebrating Africa and being African by sharing 10 things that distinguish my tribe, the Igbo tribe, from every other tribe in Nigeria and in the world at large. If that is something that interests you, then keep on watching. Number one, there are over 30 dialects spoken in Igbo land. As a result of that, there are several ways to spell and pronounce the same words in the different dialects. Some Igbo dialects include Owere, Umahia, which is where I'm from, Enugu, Onicha, Ungwa, Anambra, and Eboni. The standard Igbo dialect, which is sometimes called Central Igbo, is also referred to as Izube. A few examples of same English words translated in Central Igbo and other Igbo dialects are Ihe in Central Igbo and Ife in Anambra Igbo dialect, meaning thing in English. Ezinulo in Central Igbo and Ezinuno in Anambra both meaning family in English. So you can see that the dialects differ, but they all mean the same thing in English. Number two, Igbos are entrepreneurial in nature and they take apprenticeship very seriously. Very, very seriously. The Igbo people boldly engage in businesses and other commercial activities, which is why they are undisputedly known as the most industrious tribe in Nigeria. The Igbo apprenticeship system known as Imwahia or Ibambo in English, that is learning the ropes of the business, is definitely a case study of how wealth is circulated amongst the Igbo people. The Igbo people have a unique form of apprenticeship in which a community or a family member will spend time, usually spanning from their teens to adulthood, with another family where they work for them. After the time spent with the family elapses, the head of the house or the host, who is usually an older person, will establish the apprentice by setting up a business for them or giving them a huge sum of cash to start up something for themselves. Few years down the line, that apprentice, aka one boy, infuses same into a younger boy and it just keeps recycling. The Igbo apprenticeship system is clearly a real life case of if you give a man fish, you feed him for one day, but if you teach him how to fish, you feed him for a lifetime. Number three, the father of all Igbos, Eri, claimed Israeli origin. So it is widely believed that all Igbos originated from Israel. Yes, we are people of God. Number four, which is why a lot of people are drawn to us, is that Igbos have a high sense of family orientation. We have great value for family, both extended and nuclear. You can tell how rich an Igbo man is by looking at his wife. He doesn't care how he looks, but as long as his wife and his children look good, he's fine. That is why they call their wives Oriako, meaning consumer of wealth. There's also a great respect and regard for extended family in the Igbo land. Family matters are often treated by the elders who make up the extended family. This group of extended family elders are known as Umunna in Igbo, in English that is kindred. There's also a female sector of this group known as the Umwada, meaning daughters of a common male ancestor or daughters of the soil. Yeah, so I'm an Umada of my village. The fifth thing that makes the Igbo tribe distinct is that the Igbos have a calendar system that is peculiar to them known as Igbo for Igbo. In the traditional Igbo calendar, a week, Izu, has four days. A K, Ore, a four and unquo. As opposed to the four weeks we are all used to making a month, in the Igbo calendar, seven weeks make one month known as Onwa. A month has 28 days and there are 13 months in a year. It is believed that Eri, the skyborn founder of the Enri aka Igbo Kingdom, had gone on a journey to discover the mystery of time. On his journey, he had saluted and counted the four days by the names of the spirits that govern them. And so, the names of the spirits, A.K. Afo, Ori, Unquo, became the four days of the week. Number six, the Igbo people are predominantly Christians 
with Anglican and Catholic taking the lead in the denomination category. We strongly believe in God whom we refer to as Chineke in the central Igbo dialect. Number seven, many Igbo communities lack centralized leadership. Unlike other tribes that have a centralized leadership like the Sultan of the Hausa land, the Igbos don't have a central point of governance. Rather, they have an Igwe who also has chiefs representing each community. That Igwe oversees the leadership of a small sect of people close to him. Number eight, Solanot or Oji as it is pronounced in Igbo, has a unique position in the cultural life of Igbo people. Oji is the first thing served to any visitor in an Igbo house. This signifies that you are being welcomed. This signifies that they are happy to see you. Oji is also served in any important function, be it a marriage ceremony, be it a coronation, burial, settlement of family disputes, as well as any agreement that you are looking to get into with an Igbo traditional person. Oji is broken by hand and shared round, starting with the oldest or the highest ranked person in the gathering. Number nine, yam is super important to the Igbo people as it is our staple crop. There are celebrations such as the New Yam Festival, also known as Iriji, which is held for the harvesting of new yam. This is a very important Omena Landi Igbo meaning Igbo culture. Just to keep this video short because there are so many other things that make the Igbo people distinct. Number 10 on my list is Igbo women from different walks of life and different locations come together once every year in August for the August meeting. August meeting in the Igbo land is a massive homecoming whereby Igbo women in the diaspora and in the cities make their way back to their matrimonial villages and discuss matters including but not limited to community development development, conflict management or resolution, human development and cultural initiatives. The August meeting is a three days ritual and it is divided into three parts. The first is held at the village level, the second is held at the community level, while the third is held in churches, where thanksgivings are held to mark the end of the August. Now that you know 10 things about my tribe, the Igbo tribe, it's over to you. Celebrate Africa Day by telling me one unique thing about your tribe or your village in the comment section. Which of the aforementioned information is new to you and which of them have you always known about? Let me know same as well in the comment section. If you got value from this or generally enjoyed watching this video, please share to some other person. Give it a thumbs up. Let me know by leaving a comment as well. Subscribe if you are yet to please. Happy Africa Day. Bye.